Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at the problem of finding power series representations for simple functions by using the main result of a geometric series. Now, our functions are going to be really simple. They're basically going to be fractions. And what we're going to do is take our starting place here, the sum of a geometric series, 1 divided by 1 minus x, and we're going to rewrite our function to match that. And what we're going to do is rewrite basically the denominator to fit this pattern of 1 minus something, where the something is some algebraic expression in terms of x. And whatever that something is in that denominator inside those set of parentheses, you can just plug it in over here to basically the result from the geometric series. And you can also plug it in to the interval here and get your interval of convergence for the power series. So let's take a look at the first problem. And the main problem with this one, we have an addition sign in that denominator, whereas we need a minus sign. That's no problem. We're going to think of addition as subtracting a negative. In other words, we're going to rewrite this denominator as 1 minus negative x. And now it fits the form that we need. That function now fits the pattern of 1 divided by 1 minus something. The something here is negative x. So we can just plug it in to the summation part. And we get our power series representation. The sum goes from 0 to infinity of negative x to the n. And you can also plug negative x into the interval here. And you'll find this is going to be true an absolute value of negative x is less than 1. Take the absolute value of the negative or negative 1. That just becomes positive 1. So this will be equivalent to saying absolute value of x is less than 1. All right, now you can clean this up a little bit. You can rewrite this term. Think of that as negative 1 times x. And then you can take the nth power of each. So you can rewrite this power series as the sum from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the n. And that's it. That is your power series representation for that function, 1 divided by 1 plus x. The trick here, rewrite the addition as minus a negative. We're going to use that in some of the other problems right after this. All right, problem 2. The main difference here is we have x squared, a different algebraic expression, but now we also have a power of x in the numerator. Well, first off, we're going to pull that power of x out front. That way we'll get 1 in the numerator. And like above, problem 1, we're going to rewrite the addition in the denominator as minus negative x squared. And we're basically done. I do want to point out that the x that we have out front, we're going to put that in front of the summation, and then we're going to multiply it in. So let's go ahead and use our power series representation here. We'll have the power of x out front. And that multiplies the summation from 0 to infinity. And the something that we're going to replace in that result, we're going to replace the something with negative x squared. And that's all raised to the nth power. You can also plug in negative x squared to the interval. And you'll find that this is going to be true when absolute value of negative x squared is less than 1. You can simplify that interval considerably. Take the absolute value of the negative. That just becomes positive 1. And you can rewrite this as absolute value of x squared is less than 1. Basically take the square root here, and you'll find this is equivalent to absolute value of x is less than 1. All right, now we can definitely rewrite the power series here, especially with that power of x out front. We're going to simplify this first by taking the nth power of negative 1 and x squared. And the x that I have out front, 
I'm going to multiply it into the summation. When you multiply powers of x, you can add their exponents. So what we're going to be using momentarily is x times x to the 2n. Multiply your bases. You can add the exponents. That's x to the 1. You can write this as x to the 2n plus 1. All right, so we're going to do two things here. Take the nth power of each, negative 1 and x squared, and then we'll distribute the x in. And what you'll get for your simplified power series is the sum from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, and then times x to the 2n plus 1, where we're using that trick, or basic rule, I guess, when you multiply powers of x, you can add their exponents. And that's it for problem two. Problem three presents a different problem. Instead of having one in the denominator, like we're going to need for those results, there's another number, two. We're going to try to rewrite it to get a one where that two is. So first, let me go ahead and switch the order of these terms due to addition. So I'm going to first rewrite this as 1 divided by 2 plus x cubed. We want to get this in the form in the denominator, 1 minus something. I don't want that 2 there. I want 1. So let me go ahead and factor 2 out. All right, you might be thinking, but wait a second, professor. I can't factor a 2 out from x cubed. Well, you can cheat. Just think, when you distribute that back in, you're going to need that to be x cubed over 2, and that will cancel out to give you x cubed. So let's write this in parentheses as x cubed over 2. And when you distribute that 2 in, you'll find that it's consistent. All right, now just to make it look a little bit more obvious, let me take this factor of 2 in the denominator and let me pull it out front as a factor of 1 half. And now the fraction is pretty much the same work as what we've been doing. We just need to rewrite that denominator now, that addition, as minus a negative. So if we go ahead and do that, I'll keep the 1 half out front. Our numerator is 1, and we'll write that addition as minus, and now in parentheses, negative x cubed over 2. And now we're basically done. We have a factor of a half out front, like the problem above where we had a factor of x, but this is even better because that's just a number. And now we have our expression that we're going to replace everywhere here. We're going to make that replacement everywhere with negative x cubed over 2. So let's write down our power series, basically just plugging it in. We have a factor of a half. And that's going to multiply the series where n goes from 0 to infinity of negative x cubed over 2 all to the nth power. And don't forget, you can also plug that into your interval. And this one you can simplify, but it takes a few steps. First, you can get rid of the negative. Absolute value of negative 1 is just positive 1. And you can write this equivalently as absolute value of x cubed all over 2. And now you can multiply that 2 over and then basically take a cube root. All right, so you get your interval of convergence, but we're going to want to simplify this. We're going to use some of the same exponent tricks or exponent rules from above. But now, I'm going to take the nth power of the negative, the nth power of x cubed, 
and the nth power of two. So think of this term, negative x cubed over two to the n. We're gonna take the nth power of all three terms. We're gonna get nth power of negative one, the nth power of x cubed, multiplier powers, you'll get x to the three n, and your denominator, take the nth power of that and you'll get two to the n. Now there is a power of two in the denominator out front. When we multiply that in to that denominator, two to the n, again, you can add the exponents and write that as two to the n plus one in the denominator. So if we use our result above and distribute the one half into the denominator there, we'll get our power series representation as the sum from zero to infinity of negative one to the n divided by two to the n plus one times x to the three n. And that's it for that third problem. All the work for all three of these was rewriting your function, some more steps, some simpler than others, but rewriting all of them to fit this form, one divided by one minus something. And once you have that right here, right there and there, it's just a matter of plugging in your expression in that spot to the other side in the summation. Hope you enjoyed this short video on how to find power series representations. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.